what's up? Today I wanted to talk about ghosts. Woo! Woo! So I'm a huge fan of like the ghost hunters and ghost adventure shows, stuff like that. I really like watching those shows. I don't know if I believe or not. I had a few experiences when I was young and I think that's what really intrigues me about those shows. If I had known about EVP when I was a little kid, I would have had my recorder running non-stop in the house for sure. And today's ride is just going down some back roads. I want to see if this taco shop is still open. I went there a few years ago with Bambi and it was really tasty. A little bit expensive, so that's why we haven't been back. So in my life, I never really saw a ghost, but I heard footsteps and I had a lot of strange encounters where I felt like something was there. The footsteps basically happened almost every morning, about 6 a.m. or so. Yeah, about 5 or 6 a.m. I guess and I would hear the footsteps coming down. Uh, here's the army base right here US military base in Japan. I think this is a housing area Maybe you can't see it That's why I have the barbed wire on the fence up there So like 5 a.m. or something I would hear footsteps coming down the hallway and they almost always stopped at my bedroom and I just remember clearly that when I was little, I thought it was my mom or dad coming to wake me up. And when I called out, mom or dad, and nobody answered, I was really surprised because I clearly heard somebody walking down the hall. I clearly heard somebody walking down the hall. And my parents were downstairs cooking breakfast or they were doing something like that. It was a surprising thing to me. And it happened so often that I started to get really creeped out and freaked out by it. My parents would tell, tell me that it was the house settling. The floorboards would rise up from us walking on it and the wind blowing around and so on. And then at, in the morning the boards would be settling back down. And when I was little it sort of eased my mind but Nowadays, I don't think that's what it was. I can't imagine that's what it was. I don't know, it's such a weird explanation. And when we talked about ghosts with my mom, my mom told me that she had one encounter with a little girl in our house. The little girl came into the bedroom when she was laying on her bed. At the time, she was pregnant with me, so that makes me even more freaked out. And the little girl came in the room. From the way I remember the story, my mom said to the little girl, I'm really scared. If you wouldn't mind, could you please just go? And the little girl nodded her head and walked away. And my mom never saw her again. Not really a frightening encounter, but just something kind of spooky. And only recently I learned of another story that I didn't know about when I was young. My little sister had her friend over and they were coloring. My sister ran out of paper, so asked her friend to go to my parents' room and get some more paper from the closet. When the girl went over to get the paper, she said she saw a man in the room. An older man standing there, 
I don't know all the details exactly, but that's how the story goes. And she ran back to my sister's room. She wasn't really scared or anything and said, who's the guy in your parents' room? And my sister was like, no, my, my dad's at work and my brothers aren't here. There's no one home. What are you talking about? So they freaked out and they went and got my mom and they went back up to the bedroom and checked the room out. There was nobody there, of course. And that one really creeps me out. So it makes me think that a family or a father and a daughter or somebody had died in that area. Probably the early morning footsteps I heard was the man. And then the little girl was just the experience with my mom. Freaky, freaky. So now I watch the shows like Ghost Hunters and Ghost Adventures. And I think if I had access to that kind of equipment, or if I knew that kind of equipment existed when I was younger, I would be all over searching my house with that kind of stuff. getting close to where the shop should be. This is the backside, the far side of Odakyu Sagamihara. We don't have any money to go, but there's a place here called Pancho Villa that used to be around here, run by an American guy. I believe he was American. It's been years since I've been there. I only went there once. Really, really good, authentic Mexican style food. Tacos and stuff like that, fajitas. Let's see, is it still there? Pancho Villa. Yeah, Mexican restaurant. But it's not really clear as to whether they're open or not. Lunch set, taco, burrito, enchilada. With salad and a drink. Margarita, regular strawberry, banana. Mmm, margarita. All right, I'm not sure that didn't solve anything. So in the past, there used to be a display or a board that showed the whole menu sitting right outside the building. And it's not there now. Makes me wonder if they took it down because they closed up. I guess I'm gonna have to come back here one night to see if they're still open or not. So many bikes. Uh. Military housings over there, but again, you definitely can't see it this time. So this is the shopping arcade in Odakyu Sagamihara. It's uh, just a bunch of little shops. Most of them are, uh, when you get further from the station, most of them are like individually owned, not big corporate shops or anything like that. When you get closer to the station, it's big chain shops and corporate owned stuff. I 
there's a lot of neat little shops around here and because the American base is so close you can find a lot of American people around here I never came here for nightlife though I wonder how it is Straight up ahead is Odakyu Sagamihara Station. Uh, let me turn here. Where's this guy going? I don't get it. Dude had his reverse lights on, but there was nowhere to go. So back on the standard Route 51, the place I'm always riding. I go a lot of places through Route 51. So I've got one more thing I want to share before I cut this one for the day. I started a fundraiser campaign. The fundraiser campaign is to try to get a motorcycle so that I can go out and do some moto vlogs. If you guys can, I'd really love if you could contribute even a few dollars. I set the minimum at five dollars. If you can throw in even five dollars, I'd be so grateful. It's something that I've been dreaming of doing in Japan for 12 years now and for various reasons throughout that time I've just never been able to make it work and it's something I want to share with you. So if you put in that money you can see a view of Japan that you can't see anywhere else. By bicycle, I'm pretty limited to where I can go by time, by weather, by energy. But with the motorcycle, I'm really free. With a fixie, it's hard to climb mountains, so the mountain views are really hard to catch. If you want to contribute, you can see all the things that I can't do by bicycle. You'd make me so happy, I'd be so grateful, and you'd get a great experience to share with me. All right, guys. Whew, I'm getting out of breath. All right, guys, I'm capping this one for now. Have a good one. Stay on two wheels, and I'll see you next time. Peace.